So today we are going to be talking about charts and graphs and reports. This is very important because some of my subscribers, especially someone called Testify Ghetto, uh, just give a second, someone called Testify Ghetto uh, has been talking about dashboard reports. And if I scroll, yeah, so you can see him again here. He says dashboard report. He won dashboard report. So let's go do something about that word report. First, let me show you what we have. So if I go to account report, we have some reports here. There's a line chart, we have a bar graph, we have radar, we have polar. Now, if I go back to the homepage, we also have some kind of dashboard that says 120 trucks, 450 cars. So these are kind of reports. And if you look at this side of the screen, you also see another kind of report as well. Let's take them one by one. The report you see here in the home page, they are simply summary reports. They are actually summary reports that displays a count of your data. This is very easy to do and that is not what I'm going to be talking about because this is simply to display the count using time leave, uh, using time leave markup. This is very easy. So you can simply um, send this report from your controller through the model and display it here. So these summary reports, you can do it. I'm not going to be talking about it. Now, what we are talking about, what I'm sure this uh, test fair ghetto uh, is talking about is something like this and a few data. I'm not going to be focusing on the text or the write-ups. We are going to be talking about chats like this. The first thing I want to say is it is not trivial. It actually takes so much code, JavaScript code to write and to create reports like this. The good news is most of this code has been written for you and we are going to be doing this step by step because i also as you know created a step by step in my website so there are three things we are going to be doing first we are going to be doing line bar and radar chart they are about the same way to handle then we have donut polar and actually i mix it up we have donut polar and so the first one is line Okay, let's look at this one, line bar, line, line graph, bar chart and radar chart. The second one is donut, pie and polar chart. Let's start with the first one. First, let's take a look at how the existing report is generated. This report you see on the screen is generated via JavaScript. The page is account. Again, before I continue, I want to recommend you subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please click on the subscribe button so that you subscribe to my channel. If you have challenges, please do let me know in the comment box because I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to read it and then see if I can help you. So this page, accounts page, let's take a look at this page and see what markup actually displayed this animated chart. Meanwhile, if you click on it, you see it's animated. Now I'm going to the page. The page is actually, let me close everything, close all, is actually accounts index. No, no, it should be in reports, which is reports and accounts. Okay. So here is a page and take note that this page contains a JavaScript uh, link to custom chat custom.js. Now, if you actually look at the charts, actually, like in case of the bar, this is a bar. If I go to check it, you have the bar, which is this one. And you look at the, the, the chart is displayed only by this simple markup. Actually, there is no markup there. Just canvas ID, bar height, and that's all. So there is no code actually written here to display the chat. All the six kinds of chats are handled by a file called custom JS, custom chat JS. So if you go to your JS folder and open chat custom.js, you can see the file that manages the chats, all the chats. In fact, anything about graphs and chat for Spring Boot, uh, Time Leap, we are going to be using this later on. There are more advanced charts we are going to be doing later on using libraries that can integrate only with Angular and similar frameworks that cannot be used here. For now, we can use this, but we can do much advanced uh, graphing. So let's take a look at what this uh, file is all about. So this custom.js, you can see that it has how many parts? One, two, three, four, 
five, six, and it has six different kind of uh, six different sections. Okay, and we have this. Now this part of the chart, uh, I'm not sure you don't have, you really don't have anything to do with this part. Where the chart is designed is in this place. So let's start with the simple one, which is the line data, the line chart data. Now, I'm going to be focusing on the labels and the data. I'm going to change something here and then refer to page to tell you that it changes. The first thing is the X values is the labels and the data is the Y values. Take note, the X, because we are plotting a graph, you need X and Y. So the data is the X, that is the Y, which is actually the length of the, the line. So let's take a look one more time. So we have two graphs here, and that is why we have two data sets, this one and this one. You can also have another one if you want. This is actually the data that is used. And the same thing goes with the bar chart as well. This is the data that is used, is similar to this one, only that the, the chart is have the chart has to do with how to be bar. Okay, so take note that these are not too different in terms of the data that displays this chart. Now, if I enter something in the label, let's say kind son, and refresh this application, restart, take note of what for now there are no X labels, right? We only have Y labels, which is the, 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 the numbers. Here we have X levels, I'm going to show you as well. So if you go down to the bar chart, you see the X levels, okay? Meaning that if you add something to the X levels, that is what is going to appear under this part of the chart. Okay, so if I go back here and refresh the page and log in, you can see that Kinton appears here as you can see. This data here is hard coded. Okay, so we want to now display a data in a graph using data from the database because you want to display something on a chart based on your data or the performance of your data. So let's think of part of our database that has actually have um, numbers that we can use to plot a graph. If for instance, I go to account, go to account home and go to transactions, we have uh, transactions does not work so well. Let me see. Transactions. Okay, so it doesn't work. So let me update this transaction. I don't know why it's not working. Okay, so if I go to the accounts and go to transactions, we have a few transactions and we are going to be using this data here dynamically to plot our chart. Okay. So we're going to be using these numbers here, you see, to plot our chart. So let's follow the procedure. So the procedure says step one, open the report controller and add the code to pass a list of transactions to the uh, model object, to the view using the model object. So you need to pass this list of transactions to the page that you want to display the chart in. So let's see. So if I go to uh, say open the report controller. So I'm going to open the report controller and we are going to use the report controller to pass the transaction data that we want to display to the page, to the um, uh, pass the list of transactions across. So if I go to reports, these reports, um, so this report controller, that's where you should be. Uh, not account controller, it's going to be a report controller. So the first report, the account report, which is this one, let me show you, which is this one that displays the accounts page, which is this report we have here. See this, um, let's go back to reports. You need to understand what is happening. Account report, you see, reports account, this page here, you need to receive the list of transactions so I'm going to pass across uh, to this page, list of transactions using the model object. So I'm going to say model, model, and import. Import is going to be UI, and I'm going to say model 
dot add attributes is going to be transactions and we are going to use transaction repository so I'm going to say uh, because the list of transactions is from transaction repository so I'm going to auto wire it here auto wire private transaction repository transaction repository so I'm going to pass it across a second parameter I'm going to say transaction repository that find all so transactions now will be, will be available in that page for us to use it for a report okay perfect step two says in the account page the account report i mean that is not the account page that handles account but the account report account reports okay sometimes this can be confusing so this account page now we will get the transaction from time leaf and save it in a global variable in this way. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down here. Here, I'm going to add this script here to actually save the transaction in a global variable like this. So I have transactions, they call the transaction. So this transaction here, this markup, actually retrieves the transaction that is coming from the controller that we pass to the model you have to retrieve it using this markup and we are giving it to javascript because javascript is in charge of plotting your charts by creating this var object this javascript can now receive it in the javascript uh, markup file to actually check that we received it in javascript i'm going to open the custom.js and try to display these transactions using console.log so I'm going to the javascript and go to uh, chat custom.js and just here just here as a document loads I'm going to display the transactions so I'm going to say I'm going to simply say console.log transactions okay so we want to get this transaction inside this javascript file so that it can be used this transaction data that contain numbers can be used to plot a graph so i'm going to refresh this page now and then let's go back to the page we want to see that we have a list of transactions in javascript so i'm going to this page now I'm going to display the console using the inspector and I'm going to console, okay? I'm going to clear everything and I'm going to kind of refresh this page. I'm going to log in because I restarted the application and now you can see the list of transactions is displayed in the console. We want to plot the amounts against the purpose, all right? We want to say each of the uh, purpose and displayed in the x-axis we want to see the amount either as a bar or as a graph so i'm going back to this place again the step step by step is here so i'm going to extract the amount and extract the purpose because we only need x and y values the x is the purpose which is a text the y is the amount which actually displays a graph so i'm going to take the two and paste it right there so i'm taking out the console because it's already we already know is there x should be the so actually y should be the amount and x should be the purpose x on transaction x transaction y uh, this up to you you can use any name but i'm using a name that makes sense okay now we now want to use this to plot uh, want to use it to plot let's start with a line graph okay so in the line chart data area replace the labels with transaction x so instead of using label here we are going to uh, use transaction x here instead of using labels transaction x is a list of the purpose purposes and transaction y is the list of the amount so I'm going to say transaction x and here in data i'm going to say transaction y 
So in this way, we can help the chart. But let's just check. I can't be uh, over 100% sure, but let me just check to make sure it actually plots based on our data. And we are going to change something in the data and see if it actually updates. So I'm going back here and I'm going to refresh this page and I'm going to log in. And it says um, expenses not defined. So that's a typo. So how expenses is actually going to be transactions, transactions. And I'm going to copy it and repaste it one more time here. And let's rerun this application again. Stop and rerun and let's see what we have. Okay, so I'm going to refresh the page. Refresh. And now you see what do we have? We have a graph here. We can see that we have the, the graph exactly, uh, exactly based on our data here, this graph right here. Now I'm going to go change something and let's see that it updates. Let's say for buying some gasoline, I'm going to change it to fuel. So I'm going to account, account home transactions. And for buying some gasoline, I'm going to edit and change to, instead of say for buying some gasoline, I'm going to just call it fuel. Fuel, and I'm going to, it's going to be 10,000 or let it remain 11,000 I'm going to save. So it's called fuel. If I go back to reports now and go to account reports, you can see fuel is at 11,000 as you can see. So that's fuel. And yeah, so that's basically the first step in handling graphs and charts. So again, let's retrace. So we have the list of transactions, pass it to the reports page, extract it into JavaScript, and then use it to uh, update your data set by changing the labels to the X labels, and then the data, which is this one. I'm gonna stop here for now. We are gonna continue on this in one more lesson, and then we are gonna stop because we can't go in depth into advanced charts, but we are gonna do as much as we can because in the next part, we're gonna talk of donut pie and polar, and then we are gonna talk about getting summary data. For instance, you wanna get count of employees. In this case, you wanna write some kind of uh, summary query uh, to get count. We are gonna do that in the next class. I wanna uh, thank you for viewing. If uh, it's been informative, please uh, like, subscribe. Let's play a ghetto. We are going to continue with this. So if you've watched this, please leave me a comment. To let me know that this actually is what you are looking for. But we are moving on. We are not stopping here as well. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.